Dr. Yates. We're here in Chicago. I'm just going over a few things and my buddy Eric and Eric, you're in your late twenties or early twenties or are you fifteen? What are you? You know, we'll go late twenties just to be honest. Oh, to be honest, okay. Yeah. But you see, looking at his face, you can't tell. You know, this guy came into your sports bar and said, Hey, give me a Bud Light, you would say, Absolutely not. You get a Coke, you know, because he's got a young face. So what we're looking at today as you hold your head down here is working on this the three areas of the scalp there's a frontal area here and then there's what's called the mid scalp and then everything else and everything else is called the vertex okay on young people less and what's considered young now some doctors consider 35 i will say at least the early 30s you do not want to work back in the vertex. The vertex, you don't want to put hair here because this area is too unstable, meaning that it can drop lower, it can get wider. All the graphs you use, it'll look like you did nothing. And that's one of the hardest things for a lot of patients to understand. They say, oh man, I want hair here right now, right now. They say it like that. And then you explain it to them. And then they, some get it and some don't, but if they don't get it, we don't sweat it because we don't put hair back here on young people because you're wasting hair. So, well, so what do we do? So here are the options as we see them today. There are a lot of options now. We work on this front and this top here. You know, today we're going to do 1,500 grafts, which is a fair amount of grafts. You know, you know, hair transplants aren't. Uh, you know, they're not. They're expensive. You know, so you have to keep, keep budget in, in uh, conscious with the patient as well as what they need to get a good result. So measuring all those things, 1,500 grafts in here should give him nice combable hair and he doesn't have a big head, you know, and give him a nice frame of the face so he's gonna look 15 again. The other thing is that if you do micropigmentation throughout the whole scalp, which, it, which will just take the contrast away, then we can put grafts on top of that and we could use, say, that whole 1,500 and go all the way through. We can do that too, and we discussed that option, but Eric would prefer to do the hair, concentrate on this frontal mid-scalp zone, and then we're gonna worry about the vertex later. For sure, the vertex will need micropigmentation and hair, okay? We just would not do hair on this area because it's too unstable. And a lot of people are afraid of micropigmentation, as they should, because Eric was like, whoa, I don't know about that, you know? Because, you know, we've seen a lot of bad jobs, just like in the beginning, you've seen a lot of bad hair transplants. People come in, I don't want to get a hair transplant because they see these plugs and one hair here and one over here and one over here and, you know, Chinese checkers or whatever. You know what I mean? You've seen those hair transplants. Every time somebody will say, my neighbor's hair looks like this. And then I look at, I have the person look at me and say, well, what does that have to do with us? You know, obviously we didn't do your neighbor. So... It's the same thing. Micropigmentation is here to stay if done correctly. So it creates a pattern of a follicular pattern of this kind of shaved head all the way through. So we would do that to take away the contrast and then plant the hair on that. And why is it good? Because it lowers the graft requirements. Young guys, it lets us be more flexible with the hairline. Still, we won't do anything crazy, but it lets us put hair in the back and it's immediate gratification. So I want you to look online, look at some of the pictures we've done with micropigmentation. Just like anything, be careful. You know, everything's not equal. A lot of people, they do everything on price, like the gas station, like the gas over there at Shell is cheaper than the gas here. So I'm getting gas here because I'm pretty sure all gas is the same. Do you, do you know anything about gas? I don't know. I don't know, but I think all gas is the same. You know, if it's 80% octane or 92, maybe that's the same. So you can make a decision, but with hair and money and going to wherever country you think is cheaper or whoever is selling you a graph, my buddy had it done at $1 a graph, I can tell you it is not the same. And I'm not saying these people aren't good, it's just not the same, okay? so. We're getting ready to do a spectacular job here. So that's our game plan today. We're gonna to measure everything here, make sure that we're correct. And that's another thing, a lot of things when you draw hairlines, if you just draw them by hand, some people are pretty good, but you should always measure them because depending on which one of your eyes is dominant, one side will always be lower than the other if you measure it, you know? So the trick is, because a lot of patients, I've noticed this when I first started doing hair transplants, that all oh, you show them the mirror and they'd say, this side's lower than that. 
that drives doctors crazy because sometimes they're right, most of the time they're wrong, but we measure this to make sure. You know, so that's something, this is just for everybody's sake, measure the hairline before. It just saves a lot of grief. So I hope I've answered a lot of questions. Uh, we're looking forward to you know, a good day today. 1500 grafts to the front. We will need to do micropigmentation if he wants to rock the look that I know he wants to do and it will look natural and he will like it. So, off we go.